Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and today we have another episode featuring our two favorite science deniers, Quantum Eraser and Nathan Oakley. Today let's see their confusion on triangles and how they confront a globe earther by the name of Highlander about the formula Al Biruni. Oh, and not just welcome to flat earth, welcome to geometry. Yep, they have no clue. Highlander, do you understand what he's asking you for the past, I don't know, 40 minutes? Let me break it down for you. He's asking, why did Al Baruni use planar trigonometry to conclude a spherical radius? That's the question. Huh? Huh? Okay, let me try it again. Okay, so let's cue up the music and see if we can sort this mess out. So let's take a moment and just summarize the method Al Biruni. Now what Al Biruni did was first he found the height of a mountain and the way that he did that was he measured two angles a distance away from them. We don't know exactly how far this angle is but for our intents and purposes today we're going to say it's two nautical miles. And then he accurately measured the distance to a second spot and measured the same height of the mountain. And for our intents and purposes today, we're going to call that 0.5 nautical miles. Then what he did was he determined the height of the mountain by multiplying that distance, 0.5 nautical miles, by the tangent of angle alpha times the tangent of angle beta over the tangent of angle alpha minus the tangent of angle beta. And that gave us our height of the mountain. Then he used an astrolabe, much like this one that we built together the other day. And he accurately measured the dip down to the horizon. Now these instruments are not accurate to many more than a couple of parts per degree. So his measurement accuracy was the best that he could do at the time. It's not like uh, he was using a total station like we would have access to today. However, he did a pretty good job. And by measuring that dip angle, what he did was he said that if I take the height of the mountain times the cosine of the dip angle over one minus the cosine of the dip angle, he could calculate the radius of the Earth. And we've done this on a number of videos. So this method certainly works, and it gives a radius of approximately 39.59 miles. So let's listen to Nathan's objection and his gotcha moment on this. So you understand now, Al Bruni's got to have a flat earth underneath this mountain to get this triangle. He couldn't do it if it was curved because he wouldn't have a, he wouldn't have a flat baseline. Maybe, maybe interrupt the devastating fact that he couldn't do the measurement if it was curved. Or maybe laugh in the face of the fact he can't do this unless it's flat. It's got to be. He can't make a triangle unless it's flat. Now, on its face, this is rather humorous, but I have to admit, Nathan and Quantum Eraser actually have a point here. Now, before we go into that, let's look at the characteristics of science denial, and he's demonstrating a number of them here. The first one is cherry picking. He's trying to pick up on one individual test that somehow doesn't go the way he thinks it's going to go, and therefore the radius is disproven. We didn't determine the radius by a single test. Now, recently I released a video where I showed five separate ways to measure the radius of the Earth. And they were Eratosthenes, they were Al Biruni, they were great circle distances across the surface of the Earth, they were the distance from the Earth to the Moon and the size of the Moon. And finally, we used the ISS and the Moon, taking advantage of Kepler's third law of planetary motion, to determine the radius of the Earth based on the altitude of the ISS in its orbit. Now, two other common features that you'll see in science denial is poor scientific reasoning and what we're going to do today is show how Nathan did not properly think out his objection because had he actually done the work to investigate this objection I don't think that he would have brought it well maybe he would have and finally unrealistic expectations of perfection from science 
But let's go ahead and have a look at the question that he's raising here. Now, basically, in the Al-Biruni formula, we're making these two triangles right here. And that's how we end up deriving this formula up here. Now, this formula gives the height of the mountain. We're going to say, for purposes of demonstration today, that the height of the mountain is calculated at 1,000 feet. Now, what Nathan is trying to make an argument for is that the curve of the Earth will actually make a curve in this baseline over the two nautical miles. And therefore, because that's a curved baseline, Al Biruni's equations couldn't have worked. Well, actually, they can. Uh, let's go ahead and see what kind of a difference it would make. Okay, with every good argument, we have to start off with some givens. Now, in this argument, here's what I'm going to make given. And if Oakley and Quantum Eraser wish to question this and have a good reason to, I'm open to hear it. But here's the situation where we're going to measure this mountain. We have observer A, which is approximately two nautical miles from the mountain. We don't know for sure because we can't measure this area within the mountain itself, but it's about two nautical miles away. But we know observer B is one half nautical mile from observer A and located on a line between observer A and the mountaintop. And the third thing is that when we do the calculation, the mountain is going to be 1,000 feet. So let's go ahead and write those down so they're written in stone. And here they are. Everything's nice and transparent. It's going to stay right there. So let's look at situation number one. All right, we have a flat surface. Here we have the mountain. Here we have observer A. And here we have observer B. And we draw our angles with our astrolabe from the mountaintop to each of those observers. And we know that this distance is one half nautical mile. Now, when we do our calculation, we come up with a height of the mountain of 1,000 feet. Now, on a flat Earth, that means the mountain is 1,000 feet high. What about on a curved Earth? Well, what situation do we have here? Well, we have our mountain. And we have observer A. And I guess we're going to have to make this a little bit closer here. And we have observer B. So here's the mountain. Here is observer A. And here is observer B. And this distance right here is still one half nautical mile. But when we do the math for them, we still get a height of the mountain of 1,000 feet. That's the calculated height. What's the true height? Well, let's go ahead and have a quick look. Well, we know that one degree on the surface of the Earth equals 60 nautical miles. So what's two nautical miles? That's 1 30th of a degree. So when we do this measurement here, the top of the mountain will appear 1 30th of a degree lower than the actual height of the mountain, because we assume that we were on a flat surface, but indeed it curved 1 30th of a degree. Well, how much is that going to be at two nautical miles? Okay, so here we are at the math portal right triangle calculator with detailed explanation. Now, as you can see, I put in the distance from observer A all the way to the presumed distance to the mountain, two nautical miles. One nautical mile is 6,080 feet. Two nautical miles will be 12,160 feet. Now I'm using observer A and the distance because that will be where the maximum drop will be. At observer B's position, half a mile closer, the drop will be less. So I want to give the maximum benefit to Mr. Oakley and Quantum Eraser. The angle that we're looking at is 1 30th of a degree, which is 0 0.0334 degrees. Let's go ahead and calculate side A. This is how much lower the mountain will appear than its actual height. And there it is. 
seven feet. So in the flat earth, the mountain is a thousand feet high. And on the curved earth, with a radius 3959, which is the actual curve of the earth, the mountain would in reality be a thousand seven feet high. Now, let's go ahead and have a look and see how much of a difference this makes in the calculation of the radius of the earth. Recall the formula for the radius of the earth is the height of the mountain times the cosine of that dip angle over one minus the cosine of the dip angle. Well, what's the dip angle going to be? Let's go over to Walter Bisland's advanced earth curve calculator. Let's get a mountain a thousand feet high and another one a thousand seven feet high and see what the dip to the horizon will be. Well, okie dokie, here we go. Now I've converted this all to freedom units because they're smaller than the metric units and a little easier to see a difference with. So the observer height is 1000 feet. Now I've got a very distant target. The target size is immaterial. Now refraction will be standard for both these observations because that's what Al Biruni had. And we're gonna go down here and we're going to look at the dip to the horizon. So here's the horizon data. And there is the dip angle. And you can see graphically what they're talking about right below it. So let's write that number down. So the dip angle for 1,000 feet is 0 0.51156, we're going to say. So we're going to write that one down. Now let's go on up. And now let's do it for 1,007 feet, which is the true height of the mountain on a curved earth because the top of the mountain appears to be a little lower because on a curved surface, the surface of the earth drops away from you in all directions and the mountain will actually be about seven feet lower at two nautical miles. So now we're just gonna go ahead and calculate it again. And now we're gonna go down here to the horizon. There is the dip angle to the horizon. So at 1,007 feet, the dip angle to the horizon is zero point. Five one three three five. Now, as you can see, I've written both of those down accurately. And you can do this for yourself if you'd like to check me. Now, let's go ahead and calculate the radius of the Earth using both of these dip angles. Because the top dip angle would be if the mountain truly was a thousand feet high, and that would be with the flat baseline. Now, on a curved baseline, the top of the mountain would actually be a thousand seven feet high. Now I went ahead and did a little of the math here and I want to walk you through it just so you see exactly what it is. All right, so the first situation is, is I took a flat baseline. The true height of the mountain is going to be a thousand feet. Here is the dip to the horizon for the Walter Bisselin Advanced Earth Curve Calculator and I've done the math here and I come up with a radius of the earth of 4,751.53 miles. Now, if I use a curved baseline, and the true height of the mountain is actually 1,007 feet. Here is the refracted dip per the advanced earth curve calculator, and here's the radius, 4,751.48 feet. The difference between the two is 264 feet. But what if Al Biruni thought the mountain was 1,000 feet high, but in reality, it was 1,007 feet high? He'd get the dip from the 1,007 feet because that would be what it was but for his calculations, he would have used 1,000 feet. Here he comes up with 4,784.79 miles. So as you see, there's a difference of about 33 miles, Illuminati confirmed. So the next time you hear Nathan and Quantum Eraser going on about, well, Al Biruni used a flat baseline. Well, so what if he did? He was going to have an error. Now you have to show me that error is significant because I just calculated it out and it's 30 miles. That's obviously far less than the effective refraction because this is about 20% higher than the actual radius of the Earth, but it's still a spherical radius. So this is Bob the Science Guy making the world better with mathematics since the eighth grade. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe. I'd really love to have you as a channel member or a Patreon if you've got a little support you'd like to throw my way, it would be much appreciated and it'll be put to good use. Take care, guys. Too deep.
Besides, guy. Bye, 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 besides, guy.